toy? What toy? What matter? What matter? What shape? You know, tell me, what shape? What shape? Corner. That's right, how many corners? Come on, how many? Three. Three, good boy, oh, all right. Boy. I'm Irene Pepperberg, I'm a research scientist here at Harvard. You can also call me a cognitive ethologist or a comparative psychologist. And I've been working with parrots for 35 years. We do these studies to examine their cognitive and communicative abilities and use them as models for intelligent learning systems. So this is Griffin, and he's 18 years old, and I've had him since he was seven and a half weeks old. And this is Athena, and she's almost six months old, not quite, and we've had her for about six weeks. He knows about a dozen different objects. He does know five colors. Orange. Orange, good boy. He does know five shapes. He knows quantities up to about eight. He can do occluded objects. So think about a square and one corner is occluded by a circle. And if we ask him what shape, he still knows it's a square. Well, in the wild, if you see like a piece of a predator, you really have to realize that it's a whole predator. So what we're doing is trying to train Athena using the modeling technique. It was first developed by Dietmar Tote in Germany, and in a sense, it demonstrates to the bird the types of vocalizations we wanted to have. Usually we do this with two people, but we're trying to do it a little bit with Griffin. So one person or one bird is the model, for the bird's behavior and its rival for the attention of the principal trainer and the other person is the questioner. What matter? Paper. Paper, good Paper. boy, paper. Athena, do you want to try? What matter? What, no, you sound like a little chicken. Paper, that was right, paper, good girl. Good girl, so she is just barely being able to start producing some sounds. She has her little contact calls and they're just slowly working into speech. So we're rewarding these little squeaks that are getting closer to the labels. Yeah, this is a way of looking at the origins of intelligence. Remember, they are separated from us by 280 million years of evolution. That's the last common ancestor back in the dinosaurs. So the fact that they can learn to use a simple communication system, it's not language, it's nothing anything like language, but a simple communication system says a lot about the origins. So we can look at the origins of vocal learning as well as intelligence. And when we make these comparisons, we're really doing a lot of things. We're showing that these birds are sentient creatures in terms of conservation issues. I mean, people love to conserve what is similar to, to people and showing them that these birds, which are endangered species, are really as smart as a five or six year old child helps help with the conservation. We've used these training techniques with autistic children in a very limited sense, but these were the kinds of things that we were interested in.